Those are troubles I've seen. Want to talk about okay. them? Okay. Do, do I? Do I? Yeah, I do. Listen, it all started when this car... Every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? Not much money, oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? Whoopee! Hey, yeah, now, about those troubles. Oh, I don't want to wallow in misery. I came here to get happy. Hallelujah! In the winter, in the summer, don't we have fun? Okay. later, Danny. I'll be here. I'm supposed to get this guy to arrest Kid Tannen tonight? Hey, bartender. What'll it be? Uh... What about you? So, is your cold all better? My cold? Yeah, when I saw you a few hours ago, you were sneezing like crazy. Mister, I ain't had a cold in over two months. Oh, yeah, right. Sorry. Wrong guy. All right, um, well, uh, tell me about Trixie. What can you tell me about Trixie? You trying to put the moves on kids, Dame? No way. Good, because if you did, I'd probably be hanging you on the Wall of Honor. Know what I mean? Uh, what are, what about Parker's troubles? What's Parker's problem? Ah, Danny Parker. Now his problems follow him around like a pack of wolves. Huh. Really? Oh, yeah. Job troubles, dang troubles, psychiatric troubles, you name it. Damn. You get him in the right frame of mind, he'll talk your ear off about it. I'm sure he will. So, what, uh, what are you drawing? What are you drawing? Another celebrity caricature. Huh. You drew those? Prohibition ain't gonna last forever, Bob. That's I gotta for have sure. a skill I can fall back on. That's for sure away. as well. Uh, you should, uh, draw me. Think you could do a caricature of me? Sure. Presto! <laughs> that really doesn't look like me. I didn't have much to work with. So, uh, about the characters on the wall. So about this, uh, portrait gallery of yours. What about it? What's it all about? Who are those guys? <clears throat> the caricatures hanging along the Wall of Honor commemorate those who are no longer with us on account of having ticked off one Irving Kid Tannen. They're the guys the kids killed? Well, of course not. They're just a bunch of guys that Kid didn't particularly like and that at a later date turned up dead. It's a, a what do you call it, a, a circumstantial coincidence. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, get me a drink, please. I'll have a drink. What's your poison? Pepsi. Uh, on second thought, forget it. Suit yourself. Yeah, Pepsi is disgusting anyways. Gotta Thanks stick with talk. cola. Next time, order a drink. This if ain't no library, you know. Soda. Hey. Nice suit. Where'd you get it? Costume shop at the mall. At uh, the mall? I, I had it custom made. <laughs> yeah? Quality material. Who are you? Where you from? The name's, uh, Michael Corleone. I'm one of you. I'm one of you guys. Don't you recognize me? No. Come on, what's the dope? Spill it or I'll go easy, kid. From the cut of the suit, I'm thinking he might be with the Valenti gang. Is that so? Mm, yeah. Uh, yes? Prove it. You ain't leaving till you show me some bona fides. All right. Should we have something in here that all? There we go. This shouldn't cause any problems at all. I've got a little something here that might convince you. Don't even blink. It's not a real gun. It's not a real gun, I swear. It's a gift from Don Valenti. See? To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. Looks like little Mikey Corleone here really is with the Sacramento boys. You got stones, Pee-wee. I like that. Have yourself a drink. On the house. Matches, put down your gun. You look like a moron. <sighs> well then... Hey, Artie. Huh. He's back. Nice. Well, then. Uh, 
Well, we can talk to Doc right there. Let him know, uh, what's new, you know? Hey, Doc. How's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a depression era flop house. Yeah, it does How look are pretty clean. Investigations going? Uh, I saw Arthur. I saw him. Who? My grandpa, on his streetcar for just a second. Doc, we gotta find him. Why? Trixie thinks she's got something that could put Kid away, but Artie's the only one who can tell her for sure. I guess he's kind of her tutor or something. Ah, so that's the connection. When your grandfather disappeared from Hill Valley for two months, the bond between him and Miss Trotter was severed. Seems so. Eventually leading to a timeline in which Trixie lost her nerve to betray Ten. Yeah? We've got to find your grandfather. Uh, Parker's pickled. Are you sure Tannen's supposed to be arrested by Officer Parker? The guy's a mess. Mess or no mess, I'm absolutely certain that Parker's your man. In fact, it's his arrest of Tannen that will eventually lead him to becoming Hill Valley's chief of police. That seems really unlikely. Yeah. So, where's the DeLorean? Where'd you park the DeLorean? I hid it in a DeSoto lot. Okay. Nobody's cars these days, so it should be safe in there. Sounds about right. What about the speakeasy arsonist? Hey, who did burn down Tannen's original speakeasy anyway? I still don't know. Huh. I'd really like to find out before we go home. Yeah. Why 1931? I never did get a straight answer about why he came back to 1931 in the first place. It's, uh, personal. When this is over, I'll tell you all about it. I hope so. I'm gonna hold you to that, you know. Indeed. So, about Kid Tannen. Why are Tannens always such jerks, anyway? Ah, uh, it's hard to say. Rogue, Neanderthal genes in their DNA, perhaps. Okay. So, run this through for me. Can you explain all this? I'm confused. It's very simple. In the original timeline, Timeline A, the speakeasy arsonist was never caught, creating one of Hill Valley's enduring historical mysteries. Hmm. Okay. When I traveled back to 1931, I created Timeline B, in which I was misidentified as the arsonist and subsequently killed by Kid Tannen's goons. Einstein came with me, and somehow he ended up in the DeLorean, when its failsafe mechanism triggered sending it back to 1986. Which is where I came in. Yeah. Precisely. You traveled back to June 14, 1931, creating Timeline C, a world in which Carl Sagan wasn't rubbed out by Kid Tannen. But Arthur McFly was served for the subpoena. And shot by Kid Tannen's goons. Yes. So you jump back in time six hours, creating Timeline D, saving your grandfather's life, but somehow preventing Kid Tannen from meeting his date with justice. Which is why the Tannens were so powerful when we jumped back to 86. Uh-huh. So now we've returned to August of 1931, creating Timeline E, in which, fingers crossed, we'll send Tannen to prison where he belongs. Got it? Pretty much. Yeah. Good. One question. What? Can you explain all this? I'm confused. <laughs> all right, let's go. Okay, I better get back to fixing history. Indeed. Be careful, Marty. Indeed, as well. Mike, you're just in time. Uh, thanks for watching Einstein. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been... Uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. It's almost as if he's been working with me for years. <laughs> yeah. More like decades. Uh, yeah. So, how's you been? How have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you. Huh. Really? Yes. That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life of science. So what are you doing? What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. Mm. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but that'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. Awesome. Aha! 
Got it! All right. Got what? Let's see you. what we've got then. Ready to go, Einstein? Watch this. All right. When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious cow flop. <laughs> No, oh, get him out of there! Oh worry. man, I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. See, nothing to worry about. Nothing. Yeah, I'm sure everything's gonna be fine. Well then, I'll go see if I can find something to help, or someone. Yeah, someone. Uh, let's go speak with Doc at the Flop House. Or the Flap House. Alrighty. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Uh, you're in the park. Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never had the uh. nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. <laughs> no matter, those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the expo. Yeah. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. I think they're but a good idea. eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Hmm. Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the expo. Oh. It doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower, and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. Ah. Got to save Einstein. Damn, it's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted and I'll handle the rest. Alrighty. Will do. Okay. I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. Let's talk with him a bit. Don't worry, Emmett. I'm sure you'll get it right someday. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Right now, I'm more concerned with Einstein. Um... Have you seen Frankenstein? Have you seen that Frankenstein movie yet? I hear it's pretty inspirational. <laughs> not yet. Indeed. I've been so busy with my rocket car that I haven't found the time. But I'm planning on going Well, tonight. it's right behind you. I will once I get Einstein sign. down. So... Yeah. You really need to see it. So you're really going to see Frankenstein tonight? I'd hate for you to miss it. No, oh, don't worry. Nothing in the world would keep me from seeing a movie about a mad scientist with delusions of godhood. Cool. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, tell me about Trixie. You know anything about Trixie Trotter? The songbird of the Sierras? The night I take it as a north? yes. The floozy of the foothills? <laughs> uh... Never heard of her. Man, I've definitely never snuck into Tannen's speakeasy to listen to her. Sure. So, tell me about... Parker. Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? My pop says he's a good cop when he's not drinking. Huh. Good. Of course, now I hear he drinks all the time. Mm. So, what went wrong? What went wrong with your rocket car? I'm not entirely sure. As soon as we get Einstein down, I'm gonna go look for it. Ah, okay. Well, it's right behind you, just to let you know. You should find your rocket car. Why don't you go look for your car now? And leave Einie stuck on a ledge? <laughs> Never! Dogs are much more important than any silly rocket car. 
Especially one that doesn't work at all. It works. It just needs a few kinks worked out. But uh, you should take a break. Why don't you take a break from Einstein Patrol for a minute? Maybe go see a movie or something. Thanks for the offer, Mike. When one Emmett Lathrop Brown sets his mind on a task, nothing can distract him from his purpose. And right now, that purpose is rescuing your dog. Okay. Not mine. But anyways, uh, what's with you and Edna? What's up with you and Edna? A couple months ago, I could swear she was making goo-goo eyes at you. That was before my father had her stay sober society meeting thrown out of our house. <laughs> now she takes every opportunity she can get to snipe at me and my work. It's very distracting. Indeed. Well, see you around. Well, I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Einie off that ledge. Okay. You go and wave your arms around like a maniac and... I'll talk to Edna. See what she has to say for me. Or for herself. Whatever. Hey, Edna. Oh, Mr. Crockett, what can I do for you? Um. So, uh. What do you hate about dogs? What have you got against dogs, anyway? They're smelly, True. rude, Kinda. completely unable to Pretty take care much. of themselves. And frankly, they're not very bright. Kind of true. If I had my druthers, dogs would be banned from public druthers. places. Harsh. Yeah, that is it's pretty harsh. It's a harsh world, Mr. Corleone. I don't really like dogs either, but man, that is pretty, pretty bad. So, about the arsonist. Whatever happened with that speakeasy arsonist? I was about to ask you the same question. Me? Don't play coy with me. I may not have any journalistically acceptable journalistically, proof, but I know you had a hand in Carl I don't know if that's a real word, but I like it, so I think it should be a word now. Um, you know, Sagan's innocent. Didn't you think that Sagan was innocent? I used to, but after he escaped, two more speakeasies were torched in Colfax and Georgetown. Coincidence. That's just a coincidence. Indeed. Coincidence? Or is our friend Carl a serial arsonist? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's innocent. I'm pretty sure that Carl Sagan didn't start those fires. We'll see. One of the reasons I'm camped out so close to Tannen's new speakeasy is it gives me the chance to catch the arsonist in the act. It'd make a great story for my column. I'm sure it would. So, tell me about Trixie. You wouldn't happen to know anything about Trixie Trotter, would you? Kid Tannen's latest conquest? <laughs> well... She claims to be a lounge singer from Seattle, hmm. but my sources in Washington have never heard of her. Really? I mean, honestly, Trixie Trotter, what kind of name is that? I know a lot of people make up names, so, you know, not that I've ever done that before, you know, but, you know, it's common to make up names. Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? Parker? Just another soul lost to the twin vices of booze and despair. I've asked him to tell me his story for my column. Sort of a cautionary tale, but he's never in the mood to talk to me. Yeah, know what you mean on that one. So, tell me more about Tannen. What's Kid Tannen been up to for the last two months? Didn't you hear? It was in all the papers. Been... I've been, uh, traveling. Yeah, traveling. Well, yeah. the feds were all set to arrest Tannen on tax evasion charges. Uh -huh. Seems they've gotten Tannen's books from his accountant. Uh -huh. I heard something about that, yeah. Well, the accountant disappeared, unsurprisingly. But the feds still thought they had a case. After all, they still had the books, right? All right. Right. Wrong. The day before oh. the trial, the books up and vanished right out of the court's evidence locker. Not no. good. Lots of fingers were pointed, but honestly, the whole town's so corrupt that it could have been anyone. Oh, that sounds court like clerks, the world nowadays. Cops, so. janitors. Cool. So, he beat the rap. So, kids walking around free? Free, clear, and laughing it up in his new speakeasy. The nerve the of him. want to bring a case up against him, but without those books, they've got nothing. Mm hmm. So... You should bring Kid to justice. Couldn't Kid be brought up on other charges like, say, running a speakeasy? In a perfect world, yes. But no one in town seems to care about prohibition anymore. The feds are only interested because of the lost tax revenue. Yeah, of course. Can't uh, have money being taken away from them. So, what are you doing? What are you doing out here in the middle of the night? Saving people from alcohol, vice, and disorder. Oh, no. And also keeping a lookout for hot stories. You'd be surprised how much news breaks on this corner. Mm, I'm not surprised at all. So, have you gotten any stories recently? Broken any stories tonight? Only the usual. Mayor Thomas trying to slink. Me. 